Hi again, everybody. I'm Jamie Allison, and this is the Big Idea, Big Moves podcast. This is the destination for high performers. We talk to people from different genres, different niches, just people doing really cool things in their space and, and things that um, we can hear a little bit about their journey and what they're doing and, and hopefully take away some of those and apply them in our own lives uh, as well. And, and so we talk, to, uh, we talk to lots of athletes, obviously, but we talk to CEOs, we talk to entrepreneurs, um, and again, just people doing really interesting things that we can hear a little bit about their story and and uh, hopefully take uh, some of those into our own lives as well. Uh, so I do have one of those today, just before we kind of jump into the interview. Um, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that um, that we uh, have a relationship with Third Z and, and sleep is obviously a key to, uh, whether it's um, building muscle, improving athletic performance, but also maybe improvement, improving performance in your job, all of those things. Um, and uh, just winding down and getting great sleep um, can be tough for a lot of people. So Third Z has a, a PM recaller, a recovery collagen um, that can help as well. It's all natural. So it is um, packed with nutrients, amino acids, and supports just great sleep and quality uh, muscle recovery as well. So it has no melatonin or any sedatives. So it's not like you're going to get hooked or, or feel groggy in the morning. It actually is just something that will help you get deeper sleep. Um, so go to thirdz.com. And if you do that or go through our Instagram uh, bio and you'll be able to see a link there as well. And if you use um, the code BIBM20, um, you can save 20%. So, so check it out and see if it makes sense for you. Um, and so today, uh, really happy to be talking with Lexi Agia today. Um, she's recently finished up her NCAA uh, uh, career as captain for the successful uh, Quinnipiac um, women's hockey team. Um, she had just signed with the P PHS Riveters. And obviously, you know, we could talk about that. But I know there's, there's lots of changes for the upcoming season. So um, and now that there's been named this kind of singular um, pro league, but but that's a, a pretty huge accomplishment uh, to start with. Um, but she was also named the Mandy Schwartz Student Athlete of the Year in 2022, um, was selected to Hockey Canada's National Women's Development Team that year as well. Um, she's been on the 2018 Canada U18 um, World Championship squad. She's a two-time gold medalist with Team Ontario Red at the Canada National T uh, Women's U18 Championship. So lots of cool things on, on your resume from that end to uh, Lexi. So I really appreciate you taking some time with us to, to talk about it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super excited. Cool. Um, well, why don't we talk a little bit about because, you, you know, your your last year at uh, um, in college, um, a pretty successful one for the team and for yourself. So why don't we just talk a little bit about that to start with? What, what was it like kind of having that kind of uh, you were captain of the team that year? What's what was that like your final year there? Yeah, I think when I reflect back on my past year, it's kind of a reflection of five years combined. I talk about my freshman year, I came in and our team won 12 games. To this past year, we won 30 games. So if you look at that short time frame, well, a few years, but it goes by yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, it was a great year to end on and to be able to lead such an amazing group full of talented and, and caring people um, was really special for me. And I think about the leaders that I had my first few years and things I was able to learn from them. And then to be chosen to lead my team is just a really special feeling thinking about, you know, those that I looked up to my first few years and kind of wanted to follow in their footsteps. So I think just a huge year for our program in general, and hopefully they can continue the momentum moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and going back a little bit, because um, obviously coming from a, you know, coming from minor hockey and what you're kind of doing from that end, and obviously successful there, but it's a very big difference to jump into NCAA and jump into just even going to a college that isn't kind of right next door from where you're from because you're you're Canadian um maybe just uh, kind of talk about you know what that was like to to have the transition and and maybe how much of a role the team played in being able to kind of manage the transition as well for you yeah I think it it's a bigger transition than you expect I moved away from home when I was really young so I went to private school a couple hours away from yeah. home for grade 11 and 12. So I had a little bit of a taste of what it felt like to be a few hours from home. And I think that helped me a little bit, but you're never really prepared to be 10 hours from yeah. home. <laughs> um, so I think that's when I was choosing a school. I wanted to go somewhere and my parents wanted me to go somewhere that kind of felt like home and where they knew I'd be taken care of. And I remember when I toured Quinnipiac, the feeling I got from the support staff and the coaches was just a feeling that I didn't get from any other school. I really knew that 
when I went there, they had a family atmosphere and I would be taken care of. And it's a small school, small town. And I grew up in a small town. Yeah. So a little taste of, of home. But going into Quinnipiac, I knew I had people I could lean on. Um, our athletic trainer, I've talked about her so many times. She was really like a mom away from home. I had some crazy things go on throughout my time at Quinnipiac with different injuries and sicknesses. And I knew whatever hour of the night, if it was 1 a.m., 2 a.m., I could call her. And she would come get me or take me to the hospital or do whatever she needed to do. So having those people that I could lean on and that felt like home made the transition definitely easier. Well, and, and uh, I guess that would that would be one part of it, too, is that, um, you know, academic success is and, and actually your team in particular uh, it has very high academic success at the same time as as being successful on the ice. Um, so you know, from that end, you know, how did, how did you kind of take a look at that? And and I think a lot of people who are listening may not understand how, how difficult that can be to keep your grades up while also going to early morning, you know, practices, all of those things. Um, was that a shock to start with? But the other side, was it, um, um, you know, how did you try to balance those things while you were there? Yeah, I've always been someone that likes to keep busy and likes to have a lot on my plate. So I talked about this three plus one program I ended up doing, um, and I didn't originally start in it. So I started as normal undergrad, normal course, course load for the first semester. But like I said, I'm always someone that wants to do a little bit more. Um, so I ended up taking seven to eight courses a semester <laughs> on top of my hockey, which I say that now and I think back to it and it's a little bit crazy. Yeah. Um, but I was able to do it. And I think that's just where the time management and the priorities come into play unfortunately you can't have everything as number one priority you have to be able to rank things so for me my school came as number one I knew that right now for women and we can talk about the women's professional league later yeah. on but there's not a league where I can make six figures currently yeah. right now and so for me my education was most important and I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset always been interested in business so that was my number one priority. And then after that came hockey yeah. and then came my social life. So I think it's important for people listening to know that you're not going to be able to have everything as your number one priority. And it's important for me. I genuinely had a list. I had a list of probably one to eight. And so then the things that I wasn't giving as much attention to it made me feel okay. Like, okay, no, this is number five on the list. It shouldn't be getting as much attention as my school or hockey, which helps with the time management and helps with you feeling not as overwhelmed. Um, but really planning your schedule. My roommates and my friends call me crazy sometimes, but I had every hour of the day planned out from when I woke up at 6 p.m. until when I was going to go to bed at 9 or 10 and for me, when I saw it all written down, there was actually more free time than when you think of, okay, I have to wake up and go to skills at six or I have extra conditioning at six. And then I have class for three hours. Then I have practice and video and then extra workout or extra lift. And then I have to go back to class and then I have to study and review my notes. And then sometimes I have to sleep for at least like 10 hours. So when you think about all those things in your head, you tend to get a little bit overwhelmed. So for me, I think the best thing I ever did was literally have a planner where I wrote out every hour. And then I could look at that and be like, okay, you know what? I actually do have a little bit of downtime if I want to watch an episode or a show, or I want to go visit with my friends or whatever it was. Um, so yeah, time management, the priorities, and then just planning it all out kind of got me through it. And, and do you, um, do you do goal setting that aligns with that? Like, do you know, okay, I want to achieve very specific things or, or how does, how does that work? Cause I'm assuming if you're that much, um, I don't want to say task oriented, but planning oriented, um, that you probably have something that's, that's similar to that. And in, in what are my goals for this time too? Yeah, I think goal setting is huge. We worked a ton on that at Quinnipiac and I, and in the Hockey Canada program. And I've always been someone that my parents have been great, especially my dad. He's always talked to me about goal setting. But I think where I made the biggest transition in goal setting is I have my long-term goals that I knew. That was a certain amount of points I want to hit for the season. Let's say cracking a national team roster. 
I had those in the back of my mind, but I think what was most important was learning how to set those short-term achievable goals. So even if it was something simple as I want to shoot a hundred extra pucks every week for this next month, and there'd be little things you check off at Quinnipiac, we had a planner. And so we had, it was online and basically there was three big sections and it was within each se- each section, you had three things you want to work on mentally, three things you want to work on on the ice, and three things you want to work on off the ice. And we had month by month, and we would fill in the boxes, green, yellow, or red, based on what we were focused on. And if we did focus on that that month, and it was expected that not every area would be green because you would have certain months dedicated to certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was a way for us to check in and hold ourselves accountable. And the coaches to hold us accountable as well on these short-term goals we were setting for each month. And I think when you look at it that way, the short-term goals lead to the long-term goals. So if you're just someone who's thinking big picture, it's hard to look and say, okay, well, how how am I going to get to those 40 points or how am I going to crack that roster? There's a lot of little things that have to happen before that. Um, So goal setting is is huge. And I talk a little bit on my TikTok recently about – how goal setting also helps you stay consistent. And I think that's a big thing as well. When you have something you're working towards and something you know you're, you're working towards, it's easy to you know, get up out of bed when the alarm goes off or, or hit those small term goals that you know could be harder if you don't know why you're going to the gym. Yeah, I mean, and I think most people that um, that we talk to that you know at, at every level of success have have some system that's very similar to that to be able to kind of not just have the bigger picture item, but how do I get there? And and uh, I think that's that's, that's great insight. Um, uh, you know, you were uh, you you obviously were a leader on the team. Um, maybe this is one thing as well, especially as you um, you you mentioned, and, and we'll talk about that in a second, I guess, about the avenues for you to be able to um, to do kind of that next level of of hockey, uh, you know, and from a women's perspective. But um, but the other side is um, you know it, it, whether it translates into workplaces, any of those things. From a leadership perspective, how do you see like some of the things that maybe you developed as a as a leader in um, you know in your hockey pursuits? How do you see that translating into workplaces or entrepreneurship or any of those things? Do do you see a good connection there from your end? Oh, for sure. And I think more now that I'm graduating and looking back, rather than when I was in the moment. Yeah, I've always been someone that is very vocal. Um, but I really had to learn how to communicate more effectively and how to communicate in different styles to different people because everyone responds differently. I'm someone that can be confrontational, but especially with women, you have to be careful or more aware of who you're talking to, how they internalize what you're saying. And when you're on a team trying to lead a group of 25 people, everybody's different. So the way you approach one person isn't the same as when you approach somebody else. So I think that's something my coach really helped me grow with. And I was able to look back and change my communication styles. And I think that translates directly into the business world, or even just the world in general, when you're communicating with people, you have to try to understand who you're communicating with and how they might react to what you're saying. And I think also just being in situations that force you to be uncomfortable And so sometimes even trying to say something in front of a group of 30 people is a little uncomfortable, but the more you do it, the more comfortable it becomes. And so I think that translates directly as well. Putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, getting outside your comfort zone um, has helped me grow and, and that will definitely help in the business world. Yeah. Now I, I, we will touch on kind of, um, I guess the PHF thing to start with, because I, I mean, regardless of what's happened kind of since then and, and how things have progressed there, um, that must have been a pretty cool thing to have happen because I, I you know, uh, to be able to to suddenly have the opportunity to go pro and to be able to know that, you know, there is, there was a, uh, a living wage attached with that and, and things like that, that maybe wasn't there not too, too long ago um, as even an option. So what was that like when you, you, you know, when you suddenly had that opportunity and, and uh, you know, and then we'll talk about obviously what's changed since then, but. Yeah, I think even two years ago, I, I've always wanted to pursue my national team goals. 
But the other thought I had was maybe playing overseas or I was like, how am I going to pursue my national team goals, but not be playing hockey every day? And I was trying to navigate that. And then there was this amazing opportunity to play professional women's hockey where you can make five or six, some people sign for six figures. Yeah. And I was like, this is exciting. Like, this is cool. And the league had had 900% growth in three years, which, mm -hmm. you know, anything from even business, that's just absolutely incredible. So to be someone coming fresh out of college and to have that opportunity to even explore those options was so cool. And I come from an athletic family and my parents didn't necessarily achieve the athletic dreams that they wanted to, um, mm -hmm. but they gave so much to me. So when I signed my contract, it was a really special feeling, not just for myself, but for my my parents and my grandparents who immigrated to Canada, you know, and they were so proud. My my grandparents are like 87, 88, and they're telling all their friends like, oh, my granddaughter's going to be a pro hockey player. And um, so just a cool and special feeling. And it was a tough few weeks. I'm, I'm okay now and working yep. through it mentally. But when you have something that was just like, something you were so looking forward to so excited for and I had so had a tough year with some injuries so was ready for kind of like a fresh start a new journey um in a new city I was so excited and it was it was a special feeling and you know I still signed that so it's definitely still a milestone that I was able to achieve that yeah and now some uncertainty but but yeah still really cool yeah, I mean, and maybe just kind of your thoughts around, you know, obviously you've seen things change for women's hockey pretty considerably in the last little while in, in particular. But, um, um, you know, what do you what do you see as being the like uh, what what needs to happen to be able to kind of continue what was happening with, um, you know, the PHF and hopefully what happens with kind of the, the new league as that moves forward. But what, what do you see as being the, the thing that really kind of will help keep that momentum moving forward? Yeah. As I said, things were hard, but yeah. in the big picture, one league is necessary and was was the right move to make. Because if you look at the successful pro sports teams and leagues in men's and women's sports, there's one league. The most successful ones are one league, and that's yeah. where they'll get sponsors. That's where, for example, for us, the NHL now can help us grow. And so I think the first step was having one league. I think there's also a lot of hope for young girls, which is super exciting. And one of the main reasons why I still want to play, I've started coaching recently and to have eight and nine year olds say to me like, Oh, like when I get to your age, like, do you think there's going to be a pro league? And my answer is yes. hundred percent. If I'm 23 now, and now there's one league and they're building off a more sustainable framework. They're going to get sponsorships. It has a good framework for growth. By the time these seven and eight-year-olds get to 23 years old, my hope and I think the reality for them will be that there is a women's pro league for them to play in, that they can you know, plan and sustain and not have to have another job, that they can make a livable salary off of. So I think for me being a part of that change was hard, was unexpected, yeah. but it's also something I'm okay with if that's what it's going to take to help the next generation have this as their job. So I think it's an exciting time. I think the biggest thing is that, and I talk about this a little bit, is that the men's and women's game is different. And so some people don't realize that and they expect to watch a women's game and they're comparing it to men's hockey. And it's physical, but we are not near as physical as the men. We do mm -hmm. not fight. Um, yeah. I say we have we play a little bit of more of a skill game, especially the European girls coming over. So yes, it's hockey, but it's a different type of hockey. So people just being open-minded to that um, and being flexible. I think for all of us players right now, we have to be flexible and willing to adapt to the situation that we're in because it is uncertain. Um, but yeah, I think, I think going forward, the most exciting thing is that there's going to be one league and it'll be something that seems to be sustainable. Yeah. And, um, and you mentioned there about, um, you know, the impact on young girls. Um, maybe I'll ask kind of a two part question. One being, you know, uh, did you have specific 
people you looked up to or or mentors, I guess, as as you were growing up. And then the other side would be, um, it must be kind of cool to know that those seven and eight year olds are probably looking at you in that way, and um, and that you've had the opportunity to be able to be a role model yourself. So um, maybe just I know it's two questions, okay. but um, one before the other, I guess, is just first of all, what who did you look up to when you were younger? Yeah. So for me, watching the Olympics was something I look forward to every year. And Haley recognized her was a huge name. Um, and I wanted to be just like her. And then I think it was after, I want to say maybe the 2010 Olympics, um, Rebecca Johnston had come and brought her gold medal to a rink in St. Thomas. And I yeah. will never forget that. <laughs> um, I remember touching the medal and I have a photo with her. So then I started to really look up to her and she was a great player. She still playing um and now she's involved in a development role for on the men's side in the nhl so she kind of paved the way so i'd say those two were two women i really looked up to growing up and then for the second question honestly it it's been a really cool and rewarding experience i've tried to especially the last few months get really more involved in my social media and be conscious of the things i'm posting um and try to post more motivational things but I didn't expect the feedback and the messages I've got and comments I've got to be anything remote to what I've gotten. And to be honest, it gets me a little bit emotional because yeah. to know that I'm having an impact on these little girls, I got a message the other day um, from a mom and she sent me a video of her daughter and was just saying like, I look up to you and you're the reason I want to go shoot pucks and practice every day. And I watch, and I watch your videos and I want to be just like you when I'm older. And that's not something that a few years ago I thought would be happening or I yeah. knew that I'd have that impact. Um, and then now I'm just trying to give back to my community and get more involved and, and coaching and the girls that come up to me and just say like, we love you. Like we watched your games at Quinnipiac. Like, and I'm like, how, how did you, watch? like you're from St. Thomas, Ontario. How did you watch yeah. my games at Quinnipiac online? Um, it's been a really, really special and rewarding experience. And it just makes me want to keep going. It makes me want to keep training hard. It makes these hard times, especially with, with what's been happening, women's mm -hmm. hockey, a little bit easier knowing that I'm not doing this just for me anymore. I'm doing this for young girls that are looking up to me and to hopefully build a future for them. So yeah, it's been, it's been amazing actually, and really, really special. Very cool. And, and, uh, you know, if, um, you know, moving forward, I mean, obviously you're doing things where you are spending time with, uh, the young people like coaching and, and stuff like that. Um, but you also had mentioned that you you uh, have a bit of an entrepreneurial kind of bent to you. You you do like kind of business things like that. Do you have do you have plans for the next little while as to how uh, like to things that you you want to accomplish from that end? Yeah. So now that I have a little bit more time mm -hmm. than I expected, yep. <laughs> obviously trying to look at things from glass half full. Yep. Um, my old teammate and I actually started a hoodie company towards the end of our season called unmatched and basically just gearing it towards people with this unmatched energy her and i were two people that our teammates always described as the energy givers on the team it didn't matter if it was an extra skate and we we're getting bag skated at the end of practice or it was a hard lift like her and i really made it our goal to come in and have this unmatched energy we're trying to be the most positive people and give to our teammates so we started this hoodie company and we've been it's actually been doing okay. So now we're trying to put more into it and I have more time. So we're working on some new designs right now. And then we ha we definitely have to get marketing because um, it's only like close family and friends and some of our teammates that know about it now. So yeah. that'll be a goal looking to expand that, maybe getting into some sweatsuits and possibly some athletic wear in the future. Mm -hmm. And then I've been working behind the scenes with one of my hometown friends on an app. Um so since the pandemic, we kind of found that physical inactivity has been a big issue and also social interactions. So without giving too much away, it's yeah. kind of apt to connect people off of similar interests in terms of like working out and trying to find 
um, accessible spaces. So not spaces that they ne necessarily have to pay to go to, but it could be events or walking paths nearby, hiking trails, things like that. So we've been working on that for about six months now, and we're getting close to the end of our development phase. So hopefully by the end of the summer or fall, we'll be releasing our first prototype, which is really exciting. Yeah. And yeah. So a few, a few things going on behind, behind the scenes and trying to take advantage of of this extra time that I do have now. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's exciting stuff. And, um, and from a hockey perspective, are you just kind of, do you just kind of keep in shape and kind of from that end, or is there anything there from, from that end at this point? Yeah, I think hockey wise, it's just, I have my normal train skate, shoot some yeah. cocks, work on my hands every day. And then I'm trying to see if I can get more of a permanent coaching role moving yep. forward. I don't know exactly where I'm going to be. So that's a little bit difficult right now, but yeah. I'm helping out with camps right now. Every Wednesday I do a girls skate. So, yeah. and I love to coach. And, and like I said, I like kind of being that role model and giving back. So looking for opportunities where even if I can be a volunteer coach for a few months, um, yeah. that, that's something I'm I'm looking into now and would love to do. Awesome. Very cool. And so, uh, you know, the one thing that we, we ask every person that comes on is, and, and there's been lots here that I, especially somebody, I think that's uh, kind of, at, uh, um, you know, either kind of looking at doing something similar, like a path similar to yours and, and things like that. Um, they'd be able to take lots away from our conversation already. Um, but if there's somebody out there who's, um, uh, you know, looking at um, that balance piece, you talked about kind of how you do some of those things and, um, you know, uh, whether they are athletes or whether they're entrepreneurs looking at how do I, how do I start? you know, keep up with my business, keep up with what I do at work, keep up with my own health and health and wellness and, and fitness activities. Um, you know, some people get a little kind of stuck trying to figure out how to structure some of those things. Do you have a couple of tips, you know, just if someone were to, to kind of take right after this podcast, go and just start to put some sense behind it. Do you have a couple of um, tips as to how, where they can start? Yeah, I do. So the first thing I would say is write down five short-term and five long-term goals. That could be personal goals you have. If it's personal growth things, I know for me, um, I even had to read 10 pages of certain books that I was interested in. So something like that, or it could be, I want to shoot a thousand pucks this month and you set a plan for that. So whatever it may be, five short-term, five long-term goals. And then from there, look at those go goals make a priority list. So if your school is your number one priority, put that as number one. If hockey's two, put that yeah. as two. And you could have 20 different things on that list, but as long as you know and have it and see it, um, if it's easier for you to keep it in your phone, you can keep it in your phone. Um, and then have a daily planner. For me, I like to have a physical planner and that has a checklist because what goes with the planning is holding yourself accountable. So having your daily planner, you can see from the times of the day you're going to do certain things and then maybe a checklist of things you want to accomplish for that day so that at the end of the day, you can look and see, okay, I accomplished the things from today. Yep. Or no, I didn't. And I need to move this. I would say those would be my three biggest tips to help you feel a little bit less overwhelmed, help you time manage, and then also help you achieve and accomplish everything you want to accomplish. Because I truly believe that you can accomplish anything you set your mind to and there's always time so sometimes it's just playing around with your schedule and finding the time and seeing it in front of you so yeah the three things i would say are set, set those short-term and long-term goals make a priority list and then have a planner with things you can check off daily yeah that's that's perfect advice and and i would say a lot of um i, I think the 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 good part about it is you've talked about priorities too, so that people, if they are overwhelmed by the length of their list, it allows you to also focus on what's important at that point in time too, which uh, um, frees yourself, I think, a little bit. And Yeah, exactly. And I think that's something that took me a few years to figure out. Like I didn't figure that out my first year of school. And I think maybe that's why my performance wasn't necessarily where I wanted it to be. I was trying to give 100% of my effort to 10 different things. And when you do that, you burn out. So I think it's important to know that it's okay to give 70% of yourself to a certain area if 
that's what's needed at that specific time. And if that's all you can give to that one area, it's still better than zero and you're still making progress, but you can't physically give a hundred percent to every area or you'll, you'll end up hitting a wall. So I think it's also important for people to know that it's a learning process. I didn't learn it right away either. And it, and it takes some time. Um, and everybody has a different way that they go about things and everybody has different priorities, which I think is also super important. What my number one priority and number two and number three, they weren't the same as any of my teammates. We all had different priorities based on ourselves and what was important to us. So it doesn't matter if somebody else's main priority is their social life. For them, that must, might be what makes them the happiest and that's okay. It's You have to think about yourself and what your main priorities are um, and then, yeah, you'll be successful. Yeah. All right. Well, and if people are, you know, over the next little while, if somebody wants to kind of follow, follow you and what you're doing, um, what are some of the best ways of doing that? Yeah. So, my TikTok is just my name and that's more, I post a lot of my training things, kind of day in the life, motivational tips, videos, things like yeah. that. It's more geared to like my training athletic side. Yeah. Um, I don't answer a ton of messages on there, but I am really good at answering my Instagram messages. So if anyone wants to connect and has any questions for me, I always try to answer my Instagram DMs. So that's a place where people can connect with me and then my same name on there. Awesome. And what we'll do is, is we'll have in the show notes, we'll have links through to that. So people can, if you, if you didn't have it right away, just jump onto the show links and, and we'll have that so that people can follow you and what you're doing and uh, um, yeah. And, and hopefully follow some of your, uh, uh, some of your hockey tips and everything else uh, that you post on TikTok as well. So, um, uh, awesome. you know, again, I, I know that uh, things are, are kind of busy and lots of things going on. So we really appreciate you taking the time, Lexi. It's been great that you've been so open with your, your journey so far. Thanks so much for having me. I love I love talking about it. All right. And um, yeah, lots uh, of exciting things over the next little while. So if you haven't followed uh, Lexi's stuff, do that right now and see how things kind of um, you know go over the next little while. Um, and if you haven't hit subscribe on this podcast, do that right now. We have great people every week, just like Lexi. So um, um, you know, again, thanks for, for joining us and, and to everybody listening. Thank you. And uh, we will talk again soon on Big Idea, Big Moves. Oh, my God.